Welcome to another edition of Dog Talk and Coffee with me, Richard Hines. Okay. Oh. Here you come. Sit. Down. All right, welcome to another edition of Dog Talking Coffee with me, Richard Hines. And today, I just want to show you what it should look like, okay? <laughs> When taking a protection dog or two to a whole new place they've never seen before, they don't know these people, the decoys. So all of it is new. These two dogs really haven't even worked in a year, year and a half. So they're a little rusty as well. But I just want to share with you a few different things about this, okay? One, when you have great foundation, And again, these two dogs have not worked that much in a year and a half, very little, okay? So, starting young, putting all this obedience and protection work on them, you should work your protection dog in different areas, not just your house, okay? To really solidify that your dog is fluent, it is ready at any time, anywhere to protect you and do what it's got to do, okay? So it's very important that you work those dogs in different areas so they don't freeze up. They go, what? Here? We don't do that here. What's going on? <laughs> All right? So that's the first thing to this I'm going to show you is these two dogs at this brand new place they've never been, new decoy they've never seen in their lives. The second factor is, and I've had this question quite a bit, and I understand, what is the difference between what these dogs are doing and what a sport dog would do. And it's night and day, okay? So, first of all, we know that these two will protect for real. We've done hidden sleeves, we've done all that. They don't care. We've built them to not care about that stuff. And when it's asked for, they do it. No matter equipment is on, not, doesn't matter who it is, who the decoy is, strange place, not, okay? The other thing is that this routine that you're going to see between the owner and the decoy, neither one of them knew what was going to happen as far as it's not orchestrated. They had no idea going into this what they were going to do at any moment. They just threw things, okay, at the dogs. Like, so they... The decoy would just walk out, and I'm going to show you the whole scenario in a second. The decoy would just walk out and, ah, and start acting out aggressively. And the owner didn't, he just started doing things, right? And moving around, and they would just, you know, at random, the decoy went, May, well, maybe I'll attack him now. Okay. So there's no set pattern to what they were doing here. The dogs had no idea 
where the owner was going to move to, what, when the decoy was going to attack, if he was going to attack. So, I, so the whole thing is a realistic outlook Unlike sports, where the dogs know this is the routine, this is what we do, this is when you'll do this, okay? And it makes it very easy for the dog having the routine of knowing exactly what's coming. And even in ring sport, they still, even in Mondial ring or whatever, even though they try to change things up, there's routines, right? The field might change, but he's still in heel, right? Uh, when the decoys come out to mess with a Mondial ring dog, it's the exercise now. The dog recognizes the two decoys. This is what's going to happen. Wait for the touch, okay? I get on an object just like I do at home, and I have to guard this, even though it's in a foreign place. I've never been here, but the exercise is all the same. Okay, there's not much for the dog to think about. Okay, it's better than the other sports that have none of that. It's just a strange field. <laughs> okay, but not even close to the same as these two dogs having no idea of anything that was going to be thrown at them today right here in this scenario. Okay and hold it together and not make mistakes, not go overboard with enthusiasm and aggression towards the person, losing focus on keeping control, all right? And the other thing is you're gonna see back to back that the owner just and the decoy throw things at these two dogs from one thing to another to go back, to guard there, to attack, off, Verbal attacks, and I'll go through it in a second, but so there's big differences, okay, between what these two dogs are doing here and what a sport dog would do in its routines. These two dogs have to think now and hold their nerves in check, not knowing what is going to happen right now and, and <laughs> whatever is going to go on and what the owner is going to tell them to do, okay? So here, I want you to watch this and then I'll discuss it a little more. Oh, 
what? You stay away. Ta gueule. Ta gueule. Stay away. Ferme ta gueule. You stay away. Fuck it. Okay, so phenomenal perfection. Okay, the guy comes out, the dogs weren't ready for it. They go into action, the dogs stayed where they were supposed to stay on the owner. When, as soon as the decoy made a move, they just took off and hit him. And then you get things like when they're told to out, any little move from the decoy, the two dogs automatically are allowed to attack again. Okay? And then you see differences where the one time the decoy slightly moves and the two dogs attack, tells them out. Then the decoy there did a good job by now telling the owner with a head signal that he's not going to move. He wants to see on command now if they're fluent with the command of attack. So he stays still and the owner tells him to attack and they attack right away instead of looking for a body movement. Okay, so we have many things going on here of the dogs looking for signals, waiting for commands, and all in one total routine, right? Of this to this to this to this, then to guard him on the floor, then, okay, and then to go attack when he was attacked away. The outs, the returns, okay, all in one session there, consecutive. And sport dogs do not do that much, right? It's not even half of that. So you're really testing these dogs with their fluency and their duration, right? Their stability to over and over and over, wait for this, wait for this. Now we attack, now we out, we're told. Now we were told to return. Then we, okay, wait for a flinch. So there's a lot going on. And the dogs did beautifully and they haven't worked in so long, right? So. Just want to give you that because a lot of people wouldn't realize what a big deal this is. And it's not just one dog. It's two dogs working beautifully in synchronicity, right? As if they're one. So it doesn't get better than that. And again, not a routine. Dogs have no idea what's coming or what exercise or to go by, to return. It's all a mishmash. They have no idea what's going to happen in this whole scenario. So you're prepping the dog for its mental, right, discipline, its capability of thinking on the fly that if anything ever happens in life, these dogs can stay steady, can think, stay clear-headed, and not fail, bail out, get confused when the time comes for them to be called on for the owner in any moment. Okay? 
So that was a huge test there for these two. And the owner wanted to see how they were going to do, just throwing this at them, not knowing the place, the people. It's just a random attack. The dogs never saw that coming, had no idea that that was coming. So, beautiful perfection. And that is what protection dogs should be right know their stuff so well and have so many dynamics to their game that most protection dogs are not even half of what these dogs have right or the control so real life real scenario anything can happen it's not a dog on a leash going rah, 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 or just going bah, bah, bite them right the dog just takes off and goes and bites them and you out them and right and they, these girls have much more to this as well that was not displayed here. So, phenomenal. And just a lesson, prep your dogs. Prep your dogs. Get their skills really good.